from your slumber, arise from your sleep, a new day is dawning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you for joining us this morning for Mass. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter. We are approaching the Feast of the Ascension. And in today's readings, particularly in the Gospel, we remember Jesus' farewell at the Last Supper, where he promised that he would not leave us orphans, but that the Holy Spirit would come to be our advocate and our guide. And so we focus towards that Feast of the Ascension and beyond it to the Feast of Pentecost and the fulfillment of that promise in our day of God's Holy Spirit being with us to guide us and bless us and fill us with his love. So as we prepare to celebrate these sacraments, this sacrament today and the mercy of God, let us turn to him and ask him to renew that mercy for us today and fill us with his grace. I confess to almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Yeah. 
Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us turn now to the reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and claimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip. When they heard it, they saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good than that the will of God than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, 
He was brought to life in the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Remember Annie, little orphan Annie? What about Oliver, Oliver Twist? Jesus said that he would not leave us orphans. And my image of an orphan from early on was shaped by Annie and Oliver Twist. They weren't just children without parents, they were children without family, without that context of love around them. They lived in an institutional setting, and it was an impoverished said. They didn't have the loving support of a family. They lived in anxiety, suffering, and squalor. We can feel like orphans today. We are, by this virus that has come into the world, we have been separated from one another. We have been limited in where we can go and what we can do. We long to be free of those restrictions. And in some places, those restrictions are beginning to be lifted now physically, legally. 
But do those restrictions, those separations, that loneliness, does that not linger in our hearts? In Philip's day, now this is Philip the evangelist that we hear about in the reading today from the Acts of the Apostles. He is one of the seven, the first deacons that were chosen to carry out the works of charity in the Christian community. Stephen, the first, had been martyred, and after that, a persecution broke out in Jerusalem, and the community was scattered. And Philip himself went to Samaria, where he preached the gospel, and the people responded to that word of Christ risen. They responded in great joy. They rejoiced at the miracles that were being worked by Philip among them. But they had not received the gift of the Holy Spirit. This was after that first Pentecost, but the Spirit had to be given to all the new converts. The ones who weren't there present gathered with the apostles when the Holy Spirit first came to them. The Spirit needed to be given as a gift. After the gift of life, the gift of life in the Spirit. So Philip baptized the Samaritans. Word of it got to Jerusalem and in joy. Peter came to them and John to minister to them that gift of the Holy Spirit by laying on of hands and prayer. Most of us have already been confirmed, received the gift of the Holy Spirit, but that's a gift that always needs to be nurtured and revived in our hearts. The world around us, all that is organization that is around us, all the suffering that we see and that we experience, all the anxiety of what is happening with this disease in the world, all of that kind of thing, all of the worldly concerns that we have, important as they are, food, housing, a decent life, a worthwhile job. All of those things crowd in on us and call for our attention, clamor for our attention. But we, we who have been given the gift of life in Christ and the gift of life in the Holy Spirit, we need to nurture that life as well. That's why we are here, even virtually here, to celebrate the Eucharist today. To be fed, body and spirit. To be encouraged by the word of the Lord. By the remembrance that we make of the sacrifice that Jesus offered for us because of his great love for us and that embrace that he gave us and he gives us that can never be alienated from us. We rejoice that God has called us to be his children and filled us with his own spirit to give us a share in his own life. The signs of life and of God's goodness are all around us, even in the midst of all the confusion and trouble that surrounds us, it is still springtime. The flowers are blossoming, the 
leaves are breaking out on the trees. The weather is warming up. Now I have friends in Ohio who tell me that that's a different experience than it is right here in California. But it is wonderful wherever we see it. The winter of doubt, the winter of suffering and anxiety and sense of separation, of loneliness, that's over. The springtime of God's love and life pouring out for us, that's what we celebrate today. We look forward next week to celebrate the Feast of the Ascension, not a time of being separated from Christ, but a time of victory over death and of the outpouring of life. And then the Feast of Pentecost, the commissioning of us as church to preach the good news. No matter what's going on around us, God is present with us. And so we have joy to share. Please stand and let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the life of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in our Father's great love for us, let us turn to him with our prayers for our own needs and the needs of all the world. For Pope Francis and all the bishops, together with the Church, that we may witness to the hope and strength of the Lord, drawing others to Christ through our witness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who strive to live as Jesus commands, especially those who serve in local and national government and organizations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For nurses, doctors, all medical workers, and first responders, that they may continue to serve and heal in freedom of conscience. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who need healing at this time, that they may be filled with the hope and strength of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
that during these difficult times, where the Eucharistic gatherings are not open to us, that we love Christ and sanctify him as Lord in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and suffering in body, mind, heart, and soul, the lonely, the elderly, the forgotten, the homeless, the addicted, and all we promise to remember, and for those near death, that they be strengthened by God's healing touch, especially those written in our newsletter, and also for those we now remember. And for all who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful dead, especially from our own families and parish community, may they reason the Lord welcome them to the internal life. And for also, and the consolation to those who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prayers written in our book of intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear all the prayers we lay before you today. Those we have spoken and those which only your spirit can speak from deep within our hearts. Help us always to rejoice in your care for us and to share your love with all we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We prepare the altar now to celebrate our remembrance of the Last Supper, the sacrifice of Christ, and the gift of the Eucharist that he pours out for us today. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ 
our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. We pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, and all who lead your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we join in with the Eucharist, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. I know there's a lot of uncertainty floating around in these times and people are wondering when we will be able to come back to church for Mass. And for the time being, uh, the word from Archbishop Gomez is that we don't know when that will happen. Um, but we're beginning to prepare to have the church ready and um, I'll let you know when, uh, when the days come that we can open the doors. In the meantime, thank you for joining us virtually this way. And thank you for uniting yourself to the Eucharist in this virtual way. It strikes me that we call it virtual like a virtue. And it is a virtue to come in faith to the Lord and invite him into our hearts. The latest information that we have about progress towards opening the church will be on our website, which is stambrosewiho.org, that's S-T, Ambrose Weho, W E H O dot org. And I guess the only other thing is to say, the Lord be with you. And may, be here. Whoops, that's a key word, isn't it? <laughs> but may the Lord be with you and give you hope and joy in his resurrection and the knowledge that all of our suffering, all of our problems, all of our participation in death in so many different ways, that comes to an end in life. That is the gift that the Lord holds open to us. So, bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, may he give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, 
make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord in our lives. Oh, uh -huh.